Hi, in the previous videos, we did set up our API and also tested basic CRUD functionalities. In this particular video, I'll show you how to set up HTTP bearer token authentication in E2. So first step is to ensure that you have created a user table in your database. In my case, I've already done that. So if you don't have uh, this table in your database at the moment please set it up so that you can before you continue with this video so it has basic uh, columns like id username auth key verification token blah 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 good so once you have that ensure that your users are able to do registration and also login because when they for example in our case when the user registers an account an auth key will be created for them automatically so it is this auth key that we want the our users to be passing as a bearer token in every api request so once we have that there is the the user component there's a user component sorry so when you look at the e web user class it's basically the uh, the user application component that handles everything authentication so um in terms of what it does is that um it it does the the whole uh, authentication uh, authorization and also basic things like um uh, just like quick one like providing the identity throughout the application you can use it to check if a user is guest it is in so once we have these three things uh, done now it's time to do uh, to set up our api authentication so back to my code editor um in our product controller at the moment i have over i have added this method uh, behaviors which is basically an override and i have called this method uh, i have called the parent behaviors then it is in this array that we will need to add our so my parent behaviors that we need to add our authenticator authenticator so authenticator in this case will be an array be an array good so let's see how to do that now when you check the http bear auth uh, class the thing is um, you need to provide just the name straight away and it will work though it has a couple of public properties that uh, in the later videos you will see how can use them so i'll just provide this class then we see how it works good so once you have that let's try this part let me just remove these so you can see now um, our api endpoints returns unauthorized which means that we provided invalid credentials so let me set this to no auth it will be same scenario um now when we provide the bearer token so this bearer token it should now return um the data after running the authentication so that's how simple it is to use the bearer token authentication now, in case you are wondering, how does this work? The secret about this is found in the source code. So in the HTTP bearer auth uh, class, you will find that number one, it adds this header authorization. And then there's this aspect of pattern bearer. And then after that, it adds now the token that you have provided. And then um, remember there's this HTTP header auth class. Let me just check. Uh, extends HTTP. Okay. 
Just a moment, let's go back to auth HTTP header auth. Yes, this one. Sorry, I don't think it's that one. Let me just quickly check. Uh huh. Let's go back to bear auth. Which class does it extend? HTTP header auth. Okay. HTTP header auth. HTTP header auth. HTTP header auth, which is this one. And then, um, yes. So, in terms of the HTTP header auth, it also extends the auth method, but I'll not go much into that. So what our HTTP bear auth class is doing is basically overriding this header and also providing the value for a pattern. Now there's this common method for authentication. What this basically does is that it finds the user component uh, that provides the identity and then run login by access code. So this login by access code, you can check it's part of the web user right here. Uh, login, login by access code. So you can see that this logs in user by the given access code. So this access code is the particular access code that we've provided as the bearer token. So you can again go deeper and just try to understand how this works so you can see that this uh, is a, you provide the token and then the type of token the value of this parameter depends on blah 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 so once you set up the http bearer auth e2 will automatically run this uh, functionality for you and then log in your user so in case you are wondering if we provided maybe just a simple uh, maybe a false H a token so this is what will happen to so same error that you are unauthorized so that's how the bearer auth token works and in terms of other ways you can customize this we have for example different things like um, except so for this public property you can list you can provide an array of the action ids that should not should be exempted from this kind of authorization so i think maybe we look at this in the next videos uh conclusively so remember to subscribe in case you have any issues about the api authentication shoot your question in the comment section see you in the next video